welcome to It's About Time on ThinkTech from our downtown studio at the core of Honolulu. I'm your host, Becky Sampson. I'm a professional speaker, author, and coach. So do you struggle with seeing your own value and saying thank you when people give you compliments? Have you ever wondered why you struggle that way? Um, today on our show, I want to, joining us today on the show is Fasana Patel. She's a master lifestyle strategist and a serial entrepreneur, and she's coming all the way from Canada. So today we're going to talk about the power of woman. If you're a woman or you know women or you're in a relationship with women, you do not want to miss this show. So thanks so much for joining us today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. I, I love that we're going to talk about womanhood today. And yes, we're going to we talk are. about being in the flow and about strategies. And, yes. and um, I know the other day we talked literally about what it means to be an abundant life and living in the flow. Yes. So before we get into all that stuff, tell everybody kind of who you are. Why are you here from Canada? <laughs> Absolutely. Because it's Hawaii. And aloha. Duh. Aloha. I mean, welcome. Duh. Welcome. Right. Uh, well, first of all, I just want to thank you so much yeah. again for having me on the show. Absolutely. Um, it was a, kind of a last minute uh, conversation that we had, which yeah. we know, uh, and at the same time, it's always in divine orchestration and alignment. So this Absolutely. was just meant to be. Yeah. Uh, so why am I here? You want me to look into this camera or look at you? Hey, you look at me. We'll, we'll have a conversation. I really if you want to talk you. to the audience, you can look in the camera. <laughs> I really look at you. I think okay. most people would agree. So um, I'm here actually being mentored for two weeks mm -hmm. with my mentor and his family. Mm -hmm. And uh, who was on our show this last time? I believe he was your last Obama. guest, right, yes. Dr. Obamboan. Super mm -hmm. cool. So I'm just here uh, kind of hijacking their family vacation mm -hmm. and really just, uh, real talk, I was thrown into this amazing opportunity to yeah. be mentored by, let's say, the future paced version of me. So mm -hmm. someone who's accomplished and um, manifested yeah. holistic wealth mm -hmm. to the umpteenth degree. I like that you say holistic wealth. Yeah. That's not something that you usually hear from people. What, is that? what does that mean? So when people normally hear the term wealth, what mm -hmm. do we think about? Money. Right? Rich. Right? Mm -hmm. We think about the currency that most people operate mm -hmm. um, using. When I think about wealth, I crave wealth in all areas of life. Mm -hmm. I create abundance. You know, we talk about the abundant woman. Yeah. Well, I crave abundance and riches and love and mm -hmm. beauty in my relationships, mm -hmm. in my health and my fitness, mm -hmm. which I think we're going to talk a little bit yes, about. Yes, we are. Right? And in my business and right. my, my daily lifestyle. So when I started realizing, uh, I believe it was about seven years ago, mm -hmm. I realized that I am the CEO, not only of my business, mm -hmm. but of my life. Yeah. So when I really took that into account, what kind of power do CEOs have? Mm -hmm. They get to restructure things when necessary. They mm -hmm. get to create their own rules to live by. Mm -hmm. And so when I started to apply those let's say strategies, mm -hmm. most of the world probably wouldn't agree with the way that I think or I live, mm -hmm. but it works for me. It works for my yeah. clients. It works for my partners and my team. And I'm just having so much fun spreading light and love and teaching other people how I think in my philosophy. Now you probably haven't always been this way. Yeah. <laughs> no, man. So tell us kind of the backstory of what, what brought you to the point in your life that you are this powerful woman now that you're you're attracting all this amazing energy, yeah. um, but but where did where did you come from and what were some of the struggles that you experienced in life? That's an amazing question. <laughs> so I was raised by a single mom. Mm. She raised me. I was three, and my sister was one. Mm. And she, you know, there's a lot of people being raised in single parent households mm -hmm. nowadays. Um, this is my calling because mm. I believe that God put me through this amazing. Um, universal obstacle course yeah. to really go through a lot of struggle, pain, hardship, adversity. Um, I was overweight most of my life. Mm. I had very low self-esteem, mm -hmm. low self-confidence. Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted so badly to believe in myself, yeah. but there was something that felt like it was always preventing me from actually doing that. Mm. And, you know, I had anxiety growing up. Mm -hmm. I'm one of those people who lives in her head. Mm. So overthinking was... Are you my twin? <laughs> Maybe. It's I think highly you likely. It's... Yeah, I think we, have, we might have experienced the same kind of, you know, growing up. Because you shared way. your... Yeah. So my weight loss journey yeah. was um, a 17-year battle, let's right. call it. Right. And, you know... 
It's, um, it's interesting, you know, being a young woman and then finally releasing, shedding this weight, mm -hmm. and then being told by a lot of people around me, well, you're young. I mean, how hard is it to, you know, lose right. 50 pounds? Or, right. And what people didn't realize is that it was a 17-year struggle yeah. where every morning, Becky, mm -hmm. I would wake up and I would look at myself mm -hmm. and I would be disgusted by my naked body, by the way that I looked. Where do you think that those ideas came from? Because as women, we yeah. really... We battle. I mean, yes. I, there's not there's not very many women that I meet yeah. that don't battle with that internal dialogue yeah. of not being able to look at themselves in the mirror. It doesn't yeah. matter what weight they are. Mm -hmm. But where do you think that comes from? It or comes where does from, it come from you? For so you? it comes from a lot of places. It comes from, mm -hmm. you know, let's call it social programming. Mm -hmm. It comes from the fact that um, there are a lot of celebrities and uh, influencers out there that look a certain way, mm -hmm. that get a lot of likes on social media, mm -hmm. you know, um, and yet if you don't look that way yourself or if you desire to look sexier, curvier, healthier, right. and you don't, we tend to have very negative self-talk. Mm -hmm. We tend to say very mean, hurtful, mm -hmm. harmful things to ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that's actually what pushed me into my purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, I was able to really leverage that pain that I experienced for so long. It gave me the contrast as well as a lot of life lessons, yeah. a lot of learning yeah. to really moving ahead and getting into the polar opposite of that, mm -hmm. which is the Power. most powerful, yeah. positive, sexy self-talk that mm -hmm. a woman could ever have. It's so funny. I was just looking on Facebook and one mm -hmm. of my good friends he posted something about um, exactly what we're talking mm -hmm. about. And his post said something along the lines of, what do you say to yourself in the mirror every time you take a glance? Mm. And I responded on there because at this point in my life, I'm really doing my best to continuously yeah. avoid thinking about other people's perceptions of, of me. Yeah, that's, because, a, that's a very freeing place when you get there yes. where you don't, don't care. You know, they say in, in something that I, Go to all the time is, is that what other people think of you is none of your business, right? If they ain't paying your bills, their opinions don't <laughs> matter, right? And even if they are paying your bills, <laughs> their opinions still don't right. matter. Love I, you for what? I, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and yeah. I think I think when we love ourselves yeah. in a deeper level and being able to say thank you yes. when people compliment us, mm -hmm. and you know, one of the things I always teach in my workshops too is is that like it's it's when someone says you're beautiful, say thank you. Yes, I know. Not thank you, I know. Yeah. No, thank you. I really, really know. I'm so glad you brought that up. Yeah. Because, you know, there's a big difference. See, we are two beautiful, confident mm -hmm. women who stand in our power. Mm -hmm. And we know that we're here for a divine purpose. Right. We know that we're here to share our story and our message to empower, educate, and inspire mm -hmm. the masses, mm -hmm. right? Whomever happens to be following us. Yeah. And we just had this conversation before going live. Mm -hmm. It's like, even if we inspire one person yeah. from this conversation, mm -hmm. we've done our job. Yeah, that's it. Right? So it. it's, you know, there's a difference between conceit mm -hmm. and cockiness mm -hmm. versus confidence. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, people will see women like us we're beautiful, we have our stuff together, we're well dressed, mm -hmm. you know, we take pride in our physical appearance mm -hmm. and automatically judgment occurs. Mm -hmm. As human beings, we're all naturally programmed to have some sort of judgment based on, you know, most people judge the book by the cover right, right. without knowing the beautiful content that's mm -hmm. within the book. Mm -hmm. And so the difference is when you get to know us, when you really spend time with us and you realize that the physical beauty is actually just a reflection of the inner beauty yeah. of who we are and the women we've become today is a result of the obstacles, the battle testing, the struggles, mm -hmm. the trials and tribulations, mm -hmm. you know, that we've gone through. Mm -hmm. I mean, who <laughs> only people who have gone through a struggle like a 17 year mm -hmm. battle trying mm -hmm. desperately to lose weight mm -hmm. or just decades of their own pain, right, mm -hmm. would understand this type of accomplishment and feeling. Well, and one of the things that I, before we started this, I, you know, I turned to you and I said, oh, you're beautiful. And you said, well, you're just, I'm just a mirror of you. Yeah. Talk a little bit about that, yes. how people in your lives, you have found that people in your lives are mirrors of you. So now you're pulling out this virtual psychologist. <laughs> so, yeah. 
As human beings, we are all spirit. Mm -hmm. We are all connected in the fifth dimension. We are all one. Mm -hmm. We are having... Connected. We are all connected, mm -hmm. right? Everything is connected. I always like to say what you do to one person, you've done to all. Yes. Yeah. I agree with that so much. Mm -hmm. Here on Earth, in the third dimension, mm -hmm. we are all having separate human experiences. Mm -hmm. So the way that we view other people is actually a projection of what mm -hmm. we're feeling about at least a part of ourself. Right. So when it comes to, you know, all of us being mirrors, I really believe that the purpose, the ultimate mm -hmm. purpose of every relationship that we have is for our own individual soul growth. Right. Right. We were born with a purpose. Mm -hmm. Now the question as to whether or not we're going to actualize into living into that purpose and creating you know, our dreams, mm -hmm. our vision, our mission into our reality mm -hmm. is simply a matter of understanding how to connect to that higher power, to source, to the universe, and then loving mm -hmm. ourselves first and foremost so that we can then go out and love other people. Yeah, don't you feel like, it, I, that's something I've come to realize within my own self, yeah. is that whatever I feel personally about myself, yeah is what I give to the world, yes. right? And some people are, some people sit in the world and go, ah, I'm so frustrated, I'm so frustrated that yeah. all this is happening in, around me. And I'm going, right, we need to look inside here because we're creating that reality. We create everything that happens to us. Yeah. I mean, we are, we are master manifestors. Master. Now, you may be really good at mm -hmm. manifesting according to your life looks like what you want it to look right. like, or you may have a little bit of work to do, a little bit of learning to do, mm -hmm. and stuff might be going wrong. And it's simply because, let's say those people just haven't necessarily learned the lessons right. that need to be not only intellectually learned, but also applied mm -hmm. in life. Because mm -hmm. only once you shift into experiential knowing will yeah. those lessons go away so you can progress. I have this belief, Becky, and I'm, I'm sure you agree with this because again, we're soul sisters, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're like yeah. twins. Why can't we all just live in the frequency of love, live yeah. in abundance? I really beauty. think that love is the very core of all of it. Love is the answer. I really believe. I have one tattoo on my body and it Aww. says, love always. Aww. It's the answer to everything. Yeah. Love heals all and yeah. love starts with self. We can't love anything outside of us deeper than we love ourselves. And I truly believe that. And I think that that is a, such a core. Everybody goes, well, that's, I remember the day probably 10 years ago when I was like, oh, people say love. It's this, it's this. It's this, I mean, how do you quantify it? Where, how do you put your finger on yeah. it? But as I've gotten older and I've gotten more experience, yes. like you said, experiential, yeah. is I've really learned that I can only see the world at the level of which I'm at. Yeah. You know, if I, I remember, I say people, you teach people how to treat you. That's right. And when your vibration goes up, as you know, you're leveling up your vibration towards yourself. Yeah. That doesn't mean selfishness. Mm -hmm. It just means that we love ourselves yes. to and accept ourselves. We become a lot more loving and accepting Absolutely. to others. You know, I was going to ask you as we as we go on kind of to break. Yeah. I want you to think about and kind of talk more about how do we create that abundance? Mm -hmm. Because and how do you get to the point where you can kind of accept some of those compliments right. that we have. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Sounds good. Thanks. Okay, we're going to take a break here. Um, thanks for watching. Um, it's about time, and I'm Becky Sampson, your host. We'll be right back. Hello, I'm Mufi Hanavan. I want to tell you about a great show that appears on Think Tech Hawaii. It's all about tourism. In fact, we call it Tourism 101, where we talk about the issues and challenges that faces our number one industry throughout the state. We'll have some interesting guests, some very informative dialogue, and allow you an opportunity to maybe learn a little bit more about why this industry is so important for our state. It's been great for us in the past. We need it today, and especially going forward. That's Tourism 101 on Think Tech Hawaii. Mahalo. Aloha. My name is Victoria, and I'm a host at the Adventures in Small Business. This is a collaboration between U.S. Small Business Administration, Hawaii District Office, and its partners, where we showcase the stories of local entrepreneurs and small businesses, talk about how to start a business, talk about great tips for small business owners. Uh, please join us every Thursday, 11 a.m. at Think Tech Hawaii. Um, see you soon. Mahalo.
We're back. I'm Becky Sampson, and it's about time. I'm talking with my dear friend, Fasana Patel. She's a master lifestyle strategist and a serial entrepreneur. And we're talking about the power of women, which I love. I love talking about the subject because it is so much of my journey as well, mm -hmm. you know, for living most of my life hating myself, yeah. never seeing this the beauty of who never you are. seeing the beautifulness yeah. of who I am and I can almost guarantee the people that are watching yeah. there's somebody out there that is that has a difficult time looking at themselves in the mirror right. and they might be getting a lot of social pressure from people that they're not good enough or they're not smart enough or they're yeah. not beautiful enough mm -hmm. how did we how do you really help somebody get out of that negative thinking and yep. into that positive power of a woman? That's an amazing question. So one thing you'll notice about me yeah. is that I'm always talking to your higher self. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to... So explain to me people what that means. Absolutely. So um, So there's a self that we live in. Yes. Right. So there's the, the conditioned self mm -hmm. that you know we're accustomed to based on our childhood programming, based mm -hmm. on our past experiences, based mm -hmm. on you know, what we were taught beliefs. to be truth, mm -hmm. right? Our deepest beliefs create our reality. Mm -hmm. So when I say higher self, there's a, a saying that I heard the other day, um, something like, if you were sitting in front of Jesus, mm -hmm. he would never speak to your illness. Mm -hmm. He would only speak to your wellness. I love that. And that's probably the best way to segue into responding to your question because, you know, we were just discussing, you know, my 17 year battle with yeah. really doing my best. I can't even say trying to lose weight because I did everything that yeah. I thought possible mm -hmm. to get that result. Mm -hmm. And until I realized it was the emotional baggage and mental weight right, yeah. that I was holding on to, there is a superpower in positively reframing situations. Right. You know, positive psychology has changed my life. Mm. It's changed your life, mm -hmm. and it will change and continuously uh, become the new norm as society evolves. So for some people, they go on diets, and I always yeah. think of the same thing, is, you yeah. know, they'll go on diets. That's fixing from the outside in, right? right? Yep. And it sounds like to me, yeah. in your journey as well, you had to not only recover on the physical side, right? That's dropping the weight, yeah. right? That's dropping the one thing, but really recover and and build up the power of yeah. the spiritual and the emotional. 100%. 100%. Mm -hmm. So that's doing all the inside work. Yes. Right? Yeah. How did you, How? what were some of the things that you did to do the inside work that made a big difference? I think the first thing that I would say is you have to accept what is. Isn't that amazing? You have to Acceptance. accept where you are because yeah. You know, going back to our story and our mm -hmm. journeys where we had that similarity of looking at ourselves and feeling disgust, mm -hmm. guilt, hatred, mm -hmm. right, um, inadequacy. Mm -hmm. You know, the first thing that I would tell anyone who is looking to become their best, most mm -hmm. beautiful self from inside out yeah. is, and you just mentioned something on break, mirror work. Mirror work. I don't... <laughs> I know it's gonna sound silly, especially if people haven't done it before. Mm -hmm. Look at yourself in the mirror and say four words. Mm. I love you, Asana. And instead mm. of my name, replace it with yours because mm. who you're speaking to mm. are all the different parts within you that make up who you are as a whole and complete being mm. that may not be in congruency with your vision and goal of wanting to, let's say, lose the weight in the right. first place. But there's, you know, I've also met people, too, that don't have weight to lose. Yeah. And they're funny because they're like, I can't really relate to people that struggle with, with being overweight. Yeah. But then I remember asking one lady, I said, can you look yourself in the mirror? Yeah. Can you really look into your soul mm -hmm. and accept you? Yeah. And she just, started bawling. I said, honey, you are no different than the rest of us. That's right. I said, that is the real work to being mm -hmm. able to. And so what people don't know what mirror work is, it's yeah. looking yourself in the mirror. And talking really? to yourself. I know. Out loud. I know. Right? Have you, Unapologetically. Have you, seen, have you seen that little girl? She must be like three years old or whatever. Yeah. She's in front of the mirror and she's like, I'm amazing. I love, that. I love myself. <laughs> Today is my day. I am great. Yeah. It's, I am blessed. She just, yeah, that, she's she, a spirit she, animal, honestly. She accepted herself. <laughs> yeah. And that, that really truly is. And I love yes. that you also said to use your name. Yep. Because we, I always say this is our meat suit, yeah. right? This yeah. is like, this is not define who we are. Exactly. Because we are, this is just a body of flesh yep. that we're carrying around. That's but right. I don't know if you experienced this, and this is kind of a break I, 
brought this up a little bit. Yeah. But when society has certain ideas and when they judge us, like I was sharing with you at the break, yeah. that when I was overweight, when I was 130 pounds more than I am now, mm -hmm. I was judged. Yeah. And now losing all the weight, yeah. I'm judged. Yeah. And you're just going, oh, I'm just a person, yeah. like with real feelings, That's I'm right. a real person. How do you battle that? I mean, because you are stunningly beautiful. And you I'm sure, <laughs> and you say thank you, thank, thank you. you, thank you, I, I love you. And that's in a beautiful, accepting way. Yes. You know, that's, that's a big part of acceptance too. 100%. But you're, you probably also get a lot of the, the comments from the outside world, yeah. right? That you're beautiful, you, you probably don't have any problems and you don't. So here's you know. the thing, right? You said it earlier, yeah. like bang on. Mm -hmm. We teach people how to treat us. Absolutely. And so, you know, Everyone is always going to have an opinion, mm -hmm. but who is the one person's opinion that matters the most? Mm. Our own right. about ourselves. Yeah. Because, I mean, being overweight and feeling inadequate, not good enough, mm. not beautiful enough, mm. you know, um, compared to the work that I've put in, mm. the holistic studies, the lifestyle mm. changes, right, where I, I, I have a pretty... Um, gorgeous morning routine mm. that must happen or nothing begins for me in the day. Sure, sure. Are you okay sharing that? Of course. I love routines and Absolutely. sharing people. What, what are some things that you do in the morning to so, really jumpstart your soul? <laughs> you know, it's really funny because a few of my, my good friends, they're also in the coaching industry, mm -hmm. they're like, you're like a next level self-love coach. Mm. And I was like, self-love coach? Yeah. I mean, transformational coach, women's empowerment coach, mm -hmm. those are cool, but self-love mm -hmm. sounds so woo-woo and so... Mm -hmm. But the truth is, is that one of my greatest accomplishments in this lifetime is learning how to really honor really? and love yeah. myself first. I love that. And so in the morning, you know, I wake up and the first thing that I do is I show gratitude to the universe. Mm -hmm. I show gratitude to God. Mm -hmm. And I say, thank you, God, for giving me mm -hmm. air mm -hmm. to breathe. Mm -hmm. Right. Because I have this belief. Mm -hmm. If I wake up in the morning and God puts oxygen in my lungs. Right then I still have purpose to work. I yeah. still have purpose to live into, to step into. There mm -hmm. are people out there that mm -hmm. just by showing up authentically now, mm -hmm. I get to be that inspiration mm -hmm. for other people, which I think is so incredible, mm -hmm. you know? And so there's prayer, there's gratitude work. See, this kind of answers another one of the questions you asked mm -hmm. earlier. The problem that I realized in hindsight mm -hmm. that kept a lot of the excess baggage and weight that I was mm -hmm. physically holding on to was the fact that every morning when I would wake up, I would look at myself, I would stare at my body, I would stare at the, the, the troublesome the parts, parts yeah. right? And ugh, like my stomach, like why is it so, like why? I know there must be abs under there somewhere. Right. I work right. out enough. Mm -hmm. And what you focus on is going to manifest. So mm -hmm. I was too focused on Ugh, I'm not, I'm not there yet. Yeah. I'm not getting the results that I wanted. I'm not. Waiting. Yeah, you're getting, you're getting the things that you say you're not. Yeah. Like a lot of people, we've talked about that a lot on the show. Yeah. It's like, what do you want? Yeah. Not what do you not want? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So when you completely yeah. shift your focus yeah. to what you actually desire, mm -hmm. see the, the That's truth. That's where you have abundance. It's the secret. This is like yeah. the secret to life. So mm -hmm. whoever's watching this, mm -hmm. whatever it is that they're working towards that they mm -hmm. actually desire versus what's actually happening in their world now, mm -hmm. this is like like millions of dollars of information. There you go. Like, listen, guys, like, listen, this is, this is for you. So <laughs> when you shift your focus from, hey, I need to lose weight, mm -hmm. I need to be more beautiful, to mm -hmm. I'm so happy and grateful that I am healthy. Yeah. I'm so happy and grateful that I have the opportunity or I can create the opportunity mm -hmm. to get a workout in. I am used to my amazing, you know, high-end health club that I go to yeah. at home. Yeah. And here, being in Hawaii for two weeks, mm -hmm. we are so focused on the creation of what's, mm -hmm. what's coming, what's brewing yeah. right now with my new partnership. And there's no gym that we're dedicating hours to go to every mm -hmm. day. Um, so what are we doing? A lot of body weight yeah. exercises, yeah. a lot of yoga. You adjust. You adjust. Yeah. Now, we both, all of us actually in the home, even the baby works out with us too sometimes. <laughs> we all have the choice, yeah. right? Do we want to put in the time and energy into mm. working out our physical temples? Or do we want to just, you know, sit around eating ice cream, you know, right. maybe an acai bowl, like just hanging out watching TV mm. and avoiding that because it's outside of our normal routine. Yeah. 
But the way that I see it when it comes to the lifestyle change that mm -hmm. I've adopted and I've chosen for myself is when I eat whole, mm -hmm. clean foods, when I drink, a, I drink so much water, mm -hmm. and <laughs> I drink so much water, let's leave it at that. When I work out and I exercise, yeah. those are all ways, they're actually all part of my morning routine also. Mm -hmm. They're all ways that I choose to honor myself and yeah. love myself yeah. because it is a lifestyle change. Mm -hmm. A diet has the word die I know, in it, doesn't it? I hate itself. that. <laughs> I always tell people that, that too. I'm like, no, right? it's a lifestyle. Yes. It's about loving yourself. Because yeah. when I started my journey of losing 130 pounds, I, I'm telling you, I thought it had to be beat out of me. And yeah. instead, my person I was working with, she goes, no, Becky, it's about loving yourself. Yeah. It's learning about loving and accepting. And I know that you've got some really, as we're kind of, kind of closing up and stuff, yeah. you have some pretty exciting stuff that's going on. I do. So tell us kind of what's going on and then where, where do people okay. find you? Absolutely. You're awesome. You're awesome. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here with you. Um, yeah. Okay, so what's really exciting is that one of my biggest passions mm -hmm. has always been to empower women mm -hmm. to the fullest. Mm -hmm. See, women, as women, we have superpowers that are locked deep within us that a lot we of us... We don't think that we're powerful. We, we are amazing. We are. A hundred billion yeah. percent we are. And the thing is, is that as, and I think I can speak on both of our accounts mm -hmm. here, where it's like, you know, we have this deep calling to change the world. Mm -hmm. We have this passion to really love other people and mm -hmm. help them see things through our perspectives mm -hmm. so we can make the world a better place and, mm -hmm. let's say, increase the frequency and the vibration of the planet. Right. Not only for ourselves, yeah. but our families, our friends, and the future generations to come. Mm -hmm. For our children and our grandchildren and, you know, yeah. the planet. Yeah. The thing is, is that it's really, really hard to mm -hmm. do it on our own. Mm -hmm. And my entire life felt like a struggle up until about, I'd say, five years ago, mm -hmm. until I really started to surrender to the fact that there are people out there mm -hmm. that want to serve. They mm -hmm. want to serve you yeah. to the highest level possible, mm -hmm. at the highest level possible. Now, the only way that you can actually receive that type of wisdom and help is by working with people. And that's a big thing. And we yeah. always talk about that, too, as yeah. well. We cannot do it alone. Right. So where do people find you if they want to work with you? Absolutely. So what's really cool is that my partner and I, we are actually going to be doing a series of events right here in Hawaii. This is awesome. So I'm so excited to be back here as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. And you can find us at the OB, that's Outcomes and Breakthroughs. So yes. the OBmastermind.com. Mm -hmm. So, the OB Mastermind yep. dot com. Absolutely. And I'm the only Fasana Patel on the planet. So if you look me up on social media, you'll find me there too. We'll be there. We'll be there. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. We're thank so out you. of time. I wish we, we, we didn't like it a whole other hour. We should start a podcast That's or something. Right. Like, we should. I'm just saying. Well, if you're moving to Hawaii, girl, there's, it's hey. endless opportunities. Everything's possible. <laughs> Anything's possible. Thank so, you so thank much. you so much for thank being on the show today. Um, we're so out of time. I wish we had more because we have so much more to talk about. Uh, but we're out of time and we'll have to wrap this up. So I'm Becky Sampson with It's About Time on the Think Tech Streaming Network series. We've been talking to Fasana Patel about the power of women. And thanks for joining us again today. My pleasure. Thank um, you so you're much. awesome. So thanks to our broadcast engineer and the floor manager, and to Jay Fidel, our executive producer, who makes this show have possible. Um, and of course, I'll see you on Wednesdays for more It's About Time on Think Tech. I'm Becky Sampson. Mahalo, everyone. Mahalo.